close your eyes. Take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths. And notice where you feel the sensation of breathing in the body. Bring your attention right there and try to keep it there. We're trying to train the mind to stay with one thing, because all too often the mind is a traitor. You set it on something that you know is useful, and in just a few seconds later it's off someplace else. Because it's not just one mind. There are lots of minds in there, it seems. Lots of members of the committee. It's good to think of the mind as a committee. But we're trying to train one member to be strong, the member that's mindful, the member that's alert, the member that's wise. Because wisdom lies in knowing which thoughts to think and which thoughts not to think. There are a lot of thoughts you can think that would actually be destructive to you. Thinking about things you can't do, getting upset about that, or things, thinking about things you used to do but you can't do anymore, getting set up, up, upset about that, or thinking about how things in the world are not the way you want them to be, getting upset about that. It's very easy to mind for the mind to go into places like that, but it doesn't gain anything from it. We've got this ability to think. It's one of the things that sets us apart from other animals, so we can think things in a lot of detail. You know, what do we do with that ability? Well, we waste it usually. So here's an opportunity to train the mind so that once you've made up your mind to stay with something, you can stay focused. The breath is a good place to stay because it's rather relatively neutral. And at the same time, you can learn how to breathe in a way that feels good for the body. You can experiment. Does long breathing feel good? Does short breathing feel good? Deep, shallow, heavy, light? And when you find a rhythm of breathing feels good, can you maintain it? And when you maintain it, can you allow that sense of ease to spread throughout the whole body? So your whole body is drenched in a sense of ease and well-being. Can you do that? It is possible. But it's a skill that requires some training, which is why we meditate every day, every day, to get some mastery over this skill, so that when difficult things come up, things you have to think through in a lot of detail, the mind can stay focused. Or when issues come up that seem to be yelling at you, you've got to think about this, think about this, but you know if you think about it, it's going to cause trouble. You can be firm in saying no. In other words, you want to get some control over the mind so you can get the most use out of it. This is especially important as aging comes on, as illness comes on, even as death approaches. The mind's going to start grabbing anything it can think of. You've got to say, no, there are places I've got to keep my mind focused. I've got to stay alert, mindful, use my discernment so I don't have to suffer from these things. That way the mind becomes an ally instead of being a traitor, an ally that you can trust. But you have to train it. So keep at this every day, every day. And you find that over time you do get more and more control. The committee begins to settle down. And at the very least, the good members are in charge. That way you can begin to trust your mind. And the question is, if you can't trust your own mind, who can you trust? You've got to build up the mind so it's trustworthy inside. And it's only then that you can really be secure.